This is Goldie on Red FM BCN TV in Barcelona. It's the first, uh, if you can introduce yourself. My name's Goldie, I'm from Metal Edge UK. Um, I've been involved in drum bass music for 15 years. I've been involved in urban art and urban culture for 25 years. And um, whereabouts are you from? From London. And, uh, whereabouts in London? Uh, it's near Camden. Take it easy, yeah? Camden. Okay. Uh, and do you want to give us a brief history about your, your style, your music, um, how you came about it? I mean, I just, I just got into music 15 years ago, John Forrest. It's a story that everyone kind of knows, it's not really new. Um, I met a group of, a group of guys called Reinforced who were really making some kind of music. They were marrying great technology with a uh, great beat. Well, it, was a, it was a perfect fusion for me because I had a big background for 25 years in hip hop, so I, 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 I kind of made that transition. I went to live in New York as a graffiti writer, and uh, did my kind of university on the street there. Then went to Florida to meet my family, and um, there was a street culture. Then I came back to the UK, never went back to the Midlands, and um, just started going out to, to raves, heaven. That's it, end of story. Excellent. And um, what do you feel about the drum and bass scene at the moment? Like, uh, I mean, it's okay. It's diversified. It's diversified. It's a lot more commercial than it was. Um, but that was good. That was inevitable. That was happen, Thanks. Um, Reinforce, we don't really like to chew the fat, really. We, we, we like to play on the ground, cutting edge, left field music, really. We don't really chew the fat with commercial music. I think there's enough crap out there. And uh, we don't we prefer not to do that, stay away from it. I don't think we, we don't base our record sales on a formula. We work with, I, I, I as an artist like to have an artist on the label. I like to shape them as a producer and make sure they have the sound of what Melez is. I mean let's face it, we, we are really the Motown of Drum and Bass really. We have a 15 year history, we have a 95 release catalogue, we have five mix, five albums up from the camp. It doesn't need to be tested, really, it, and it's it's really that every track on Metlets, if you if you listen to it, it is a, there's a timeline and it matches the cold. Yeah. It doesn't like drop out and become really commercial or do something else. I think it was a bit of a masterstroke because I always knew that when, when I made Timeless, I would make sure that I would maintain an underground label that could carry along uh, alongside and parallel to to what was going to happen when Goldie blew up. And. Uh, the first thing that people do when people blow up, especially in England, being critical, is go, oh, it's too much, he's blowing up, and it's whatever. But I had the label right on my hip, and no one could really fuck with that. Um, I wish more artists would do that, because if commerciality is here, then they must realise that they still need to service, they have a, a dutifulness to service the underground, the people that put them there. See, when people buy into your album and it blows up, other people outside of the genre get into it. And they're the ones that seem to judge your music when you yeah. make another album. And the underground seems to be the ones that suffer because they're the ones that carry you, throw you off there, and no one seems to give them any credit. Yeah. I've always maintained that culture is what, exactly what he says on the tin. It's culture, and it develops as culture. And you must understand as an artist, I, I'm not a fucking DJ, first and foremost. I mean, I'm not a DJ. What I do is I arrange music to the sound that I like. And people forget that it's, it's a synergy that people don't quite get I think it, I think the only comparison I can compare it to especially in Barcelona I remember Henry, Henry Chalfont who was a very famous author of a book called Subway Art came to Barcelona just to look at graffiti to put it in the book and Barcelona has always been very very strong with street culture especially the Catalans it's a very strong culture I think Barcelona is kind of like New York there's New York and there's America yeah and I think, I've been in this culture for 25, I've been in this culture so long that I, I'm like a tree, I see, the, I see the, the weather changing many, many years, I seem to pass, come and go, and I'm seasoned enough to understand the culture in a respectful way. Um, when I play music in this club, it's not me, Goldie, playing music, it's a whole set of people behind me that made Goldie play the music. And they're, and they're all influential to what I do. Um, I don't really like commercial music. I think if music has integrity and it blows yeah. up, people go, it's great album timeless. Do you understand it? Well, I don't know, it just sounds great. People don't have to really understand, they just have to take it in. Yeah. The difference between timeless being an album which is like a bit of a sheep in wolf's clothing, it brings you in, brings you in, 
Then he takes the cover off and goes, this is what it really is. You have any city life, but you have timeless. Any city life came from timeless. So there's a science behind what I do, and there's a science behind this culture. This music is too important to spend 15 years copping out at the end of it and thinking, uh, oh. Sorry, man. Uh, your name, Goldie. How did you come up with it? Um, well, I, when I left, I was in care. I was in, in institutes from 3 to 18. I was, um, I was in care. Like I was in three foster homes, adoption, uh, five different uh, uh, orphanages. And I came out of there and I, went, I came back and found my mother when I was 18. And uh, I, I kind of met her and started to understand her and I, I went to live with her. In a place called Firetown, which is a bit like Brooklyn. Oh, sorry, the Bronx. Really. And um, I, I just grew lots to become a Rastafarian, as, as everyone does in the hood. Everyone in, in England becomes Rasta. It's just it's part of the university of culture. And um, I grew locks, and I, I was I, I had very light hair, and they called me Goldilocks. And then when I started breakdancing, I had Goldilocks on my tracksuit, and I cut my hair, and I took off the gold, I took off the locks and kept the Goldie, and that's the end of the there was coined the name. Excellent. <laughs> it wasn't the gold. The gold came later. <laughs> yeah, what is the story with the gold? Well, I've always been fascinated with, with alchemy. I mean, uh, it's taken me 44 years to work out what I did. And I'm an alchemist. It's simple as that. There's no other explanation. Because I do everything. I, I don't know why I do everything and why I want to do different things. Why do I make jewellery? Why do I melt gold? Why do I make music in a studio? Why do I conduct? Why do I make music for an orchestra? Why do I make long compositions? Why do I make yeah. ballads? You know, why do I act? And it's just alchemy. I take the form, what's present, and I, and I, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm off the form. I like being, you know, the two things I've always had to deal with as far as being an artist and in my entire life is being one, misunderstood, and two, being abandoned. With those two issues of my life, I'm quite happy with that now because also in this life I chose the two worst genres in the world to, to bring across my message. One being graffiti, which no one really gets the purism of graffiti. And, 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 and two, drum and bass. Who gets the real, real music underneath the surface? In China, Chinese medicine, there are five pulses. In Western society, there's one. We have the other four underneath the surface. Those are the pulses that we have. And those are the pulses that I choose. And people don't quite understand the pulses of me, so I don't mind. It just takes people a lot, a lot more time to work out. When I was championing this music and going out with, with the tour, with Golden Live, everyone was like, you can't make drum and bass live. It's, it's not live, it's sampled music. I'm like, okay, so what have we been taking music from? So I think I look at it in the same way that Someone gave me a paintball gun and I ran into the forest and I said, charge everyone, let's go. We can all do this together. And then when I, when I charge and I turn around, no one's there. So you're trailblazing it and then you're getting shot to pieces by the enemy. That's pretty much my life with this music. I've always waited for people to catch up or to bring reinforcements. Um, and also it's about being humble. It's about respecting where you've been and respecting the people that put you there. And um, when I see it now, when I see the commerciality, I, I kind of so it doesn't, doesn't fill my belly with the right meal yeah. that I need. It may, it may feel the it may feel the 17 year old kid's belly who's 18 who's just dropped his first E. But when I was coming up in this music, dropping my first E, coming up through this business, I looked at my peers, my mentors, and, and I, I acknowledged them, and they were playing cutting edge stuff. All of them were playing really cutting edge music. So I had to try and understand and try and reach to an understanding and now it's the other way around we feed the children crap and they eat crap if you feed them bad food they will grow up with bad diet they will have bad food they will have bad health the music is the same feed them good food give them good health and make them grow with the music it's only my opinion